Have you ever contemplated the divine nature of Jesus Christ? It's a question that may seem simple, but it's packed with layers of complexity and depth that have intrigued and puzzled scholars, theologians and believers for centuries. The nature of Jesus Christ has been the subject of intense debate and scrutiny throughout history, with different interpretations and beliefs, shaping the course of many religious doctrines and practices. But in the midst of these differing viewpoints, one fundamental question remains. Is Jesus truly God? Consider for a moment the book of Revelation, where Jesus is referred to as the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. These are not just lofty titles or poetic metaphors, but profound declarations of the eternal and divine nature of Jesus. Yet, some find it hard to reconcile the image of Jesus, the compassionate teacher and healer, with the omnipotent, omniscient deity depicted in the scriptures. Misconceptions and misunderstandings abound. Many see Jesus as a prophet, a messenger, a spiritual leader. Significant, yes, but not divine. Others recognize Jesus as the Son of God, but struggle with the concept of him being God himself. Then there are those who view Jesus merely as a historical figure, dismissing any claims of divinity. Yet the scriptures tell a different story, a story that challenges these misconceptions and invites us to look beyond our preconceived notions to explore the depth of Jesus' divine nature. From the Old Testament prophecies to the New Testament revelations, the Bible paints a portrait of Jesus as not just a part of God's grand narrative, but as God himself. So is Jesus truly God? It's a question that invites introspection, examination and exploration. It's a question that takes us on a journey through the pages of the Bible, across the expanse of history and into the heart of our own beliefs and understanding. Join us as we delve into the scriptures to unravel the deity of Jesus. We'll explore, analyze, and discuss the evidence that points to Jesus as God Almighty, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Together, let's embark on this journey of discovery and faith. Revelation 1, 8 offers a profound declaration about Jesus. This verse, nestled in the final book of the New Testament, reverberates with an assertion that cannot be overlooked. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Let's unfold this verse bit by bit. The Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet, respectively. This title, attributed to Jesus, is more than a mere linguistic note. It's a statement of all-encompassing authority, of being the beginning and the end. It implies that Jesus was present before creation and will remain long after the end of days. This title also establishes an essential truth about Jesus' nature. By being the Alpha and Omega, Jesus is not confined by time as we understand it. He exists beyond it, unbounded by the past, present or future. This eternal existence is a key characteristic of God anchoring Jesus in the divine realm. Moreover, the verse refers to Jesus as the Lord God. This is a title reserved for God alone, signifying absolute sovereignty and omnipotence. By attributing this title to Jesus, the verse unequivocally states that Jesus is God. The final part of the verse, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, further supports this claim. It echoes the divine name revealed to Moses in Exodus 3.14, I am who I am. This name refers to God's self-existence, his independence from all creation. By using this language for Jesus, Revelation 1, 8 aligns him with the God of the Old Testament, reiterating his deity. And so, as we delve into the depths of Revelation 1, 8, we discover an awe-inspiring truth. Jesus, the Alpha and Omega, is not a mere historical figure or prophet. He is the eternal, self-existing, all-powerful God. As the Alpha and Omega, Jesus transcends time, affirming his divine nature. Scene script. Scriptures also portray Jesus as the judge of the world, but what does that mean? Well, it's more than just a symbolic title. When we delve into the scriptures, we find that Jesus, being the judge of the world, is a clear sign of his deity. You see, the Bible says in John chapter 5, verse 22, Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son. This verse shows us that Jesus is not just a judge, but the judge. All judgment has been entrusted to him and him alone. This is a role of immense authority and responsibility, and it's a role that only God can fill. Moreover, in Acts chapter 10, verse 42, we read, He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. 
Here we see that Jesus is not just the judge of the world, but the judge of the living and the dead. This is a role that transcends time and space, a role that only the eternal God can fill. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, we find, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. This verse not only reasserts Jesus' role as the judge of the living and the dead, but it also connects this role with his second coming. This is a role that comes with great power and glory, a role that only the Almighty can fill. So you see, when we say that Jesus is the judge of the world, we're not just saying that he has a significant role, we're saying that he has a divine role, a role that is reserved for God and God alone. As the judge, Jesus holds a position of supreme authority, further asserting his deity. The Bible offers numerous other instances that affirm Jesus' deity. Our journey through Scripture takes us first to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Here, Word is a title for Jesus, signifying His divine essence and His eternal existence. This verse boldly proclaims Jesus as God, existing before all of time itself. Next, we delve into the heart of Paul's letter to the Philippians. In chapter 2, verse 6, Paul describes Jesus as being in the form of God and equal with God. This isn't a fleeting remark, it's a profound affirmation of Jesus' divine nature. Let's also remember the encounter between Jesus and Thomas in John chapter 20, verse 28. Thomas, upon seeing the resurrected Lord, exclaims, My Lord and my God. To this, Jesus doesn't correct him, but instead commends his belief. This interaction provides a clear testament to Jesus' deity. We journey next to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 8. Here it's God the Father speaking about Jesus, saying, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. This direct address from the Father to the Son as God underscores the divine nature of Jesus. And let's not forget the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 13, where Paul refers to Jesus as our great God and Savior. This is a powerful statement that equates Jesus with God himself. Finally, we visit Revelation chapter 22, verse 13. Here, Jesus declares himself as the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. This is a clear proclamation of his eternal existence and sovereignty, attributes of God alone. These scriptures collectively strengthen the assertion of Jesus' deity. Non-believers often question Jesus' deity. It's not uncommon to encounter doubts or questions regarding the divine nature of Jesus. Some may wonder, if Jesus is God, why does he pray to God? Others might ask, why does Jesus say the Father is greater than him? These questions, while seemingly challenging, can be addressed through a deeper understanding of Scripture. Firstly, when Jesus prays to God, he does so not because he is lesser, but because he willingly humbled himself to become human. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 6 to 8, it's written that Jesus, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. This scripture beautifully illustrates Jesus' humility in his incarnation. Secondly, the statement that the Father is greater than Jesus is not a denial of his deity, but rather an affirmation of his role within the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all God, yet they each have different roles. Jesus, in his earthly ministry, submitted to the Father's will, thus acknowledging the Father's greater role. This does not diminish his deity, but rather emphasizes the unity within the Trinity. Moreover, the scriptures are replete with verses that affirm Jesus' deity. John chapter 1 verse 1 states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This verse clearly identifies Jesus, the Word made flesh, as God. Through these scriptural arguments, we see that the questions often raised by non-believers can be answered not by denying Jesus' deity, but by understanding the fullness of his character and mission as revealed in the Bible. Through scriptures, we can confidently affirm Jesus' divine nature. Let's recap our exploration of Jesus' deity. We've journeyed through the annals of scripture, dissecting and analyzing key passages that illuminate the divine nature of Jesus Christ. We began with Revelation 1 verse 8, where Jesus identifies himself as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We move forward to Revelation 1 verses 17 to 18, where Jesus again asserts his eternal nature. He tells us he is the first and the last. 
the one who lives and was dead, and behold, he is alive forevermore. He holds the keys of Hades and of death. Such a claim, such authority can only emanate from the divine. We didn't stop there. We delved further into the Bible, unearthing other verses that declare Jesus' deity. John 1 verse 1, for instance, tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word, as we know, is Jesus. He was there at the very start with God and as God. We also looked at Colossians 2 verse 9, which clearly states, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. This verse unequivocally affirms that Jesus is God in bodily form. Throughout our exploration, we've addressed various questions raised by non-believers. We've used the power of scripture to provide robust, unassailable answers. We've shown that Jesus' deity is not an invention of man, but a truth embedded in the very fabric of the Bible. And so we come to the crux of our discussion. Jesus is God Almighty. He is the one who will return to judge the world, the one who holds the keys to eternity. His divinity is not a matter of interpretation or debate, but a fundamental truth revealed in Scripture. As we delve into the Scriptures, we find overwhelming evidence of Jesus' deity, affirming that he is indeed God. Our journey into the Scriptures has been enlightening. There's a certain charm in diving deep into the sacred texts unraveling layers of meaning and discovering truths that stand the test of time. The deity of Jesus is a topic that not just holds spiritual significance, but also provides an intriguing exploration of history, theology and philosophy. Our exploration today has led us to understand Jesus as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who was and is and is to come, the Almighty God. This understanding is not just rooted in one or two verses, but is echoed throughout the scriptures, painting a comprehensive picture of his divine nature. However, the beauty of these texts is that they are not just meant for passive reading. They invite us to engage, question and ponder. They urge us to look beyond the obvious and seek the hidden depths. They prompt us to not just accept, but to understand, to not just believe, but to experience. If you've been intrigued by our discussion today, we, we encourage you to delve deeper, explore the scriptures, question the interpretation, seek your own understanding. Engage with these texts, not just as ancient words on a page, but as living, breathing entities that hold timeless wisdom. And while you're on this journey of exploration, remember that you're not alone. We're here, ready to delve into these discussions, eager to share our insights and thrilled to learn from yours. Your questions, your thoughts, your insights, they are what make these discussions truly enriching. So continue exploring, continue questioning, continue engaging. And as you do, remember, this is just one of the many fascinating topics that the scriptures hold. There's a whole universe of knowledge waiting to be discovered. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of the deity of Jesus. We hope it has offered a deeper understanding of his divine nature. Remember to subscribe for more enlightening discussions.